see. Yeah. Uh, uh, George, you've been super knowledgeable, super honest. This has been a treat having you on. And before we let you go, I would be remiss in not taking advantage of having a music business professor here who's worked with so many artists um, and just ask you, uh, for all the listeners out there, do you have any you know, last parting tips that you can share with the indie artists that are listening to help them move their careers forward? I think that, I think fundamentally, um, the, the people, artists need to understand, understand that their assets are, are their copyrights. They need to understand how, um, how, how to, how to protect and, and increase their value, right? Um, and the two go hand in hand. And as we move, you know, not move, as we've moved to a, a, a industry where there's no, it's no longer value through, through pre-recorded sale, pre-recorded music, um, streaming and, and therefore public performance rights and those types of things become very important. And so that's, that's the sort of academic answer. And, and, Man, twenty years or so trying to get artists to care about that. I, I I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I'm just you know treading water. But but I do. I can't. I always feel like with my students, you you, you have to understand your public performance rights and, and understand where the money's flowing. Um, but on on a less sort of academic side, test things, try things. Right there, there there's a good book. It's it's sort of dated at this point and it's over overused. But but the Lean Startup by by Eric Ries. Um, or the innovators method um, that came out of Clayton Christensen's group um, are both are both really great books that I don't know that they ever mention the music business, but they, they preach a philosophy of come up with a thesis that, that that you can test and that that thesis for a musician should be am I making music that that's remarkable and by remarkable I mean that, that people will talk about a and B am I putting it in front of people predisposed to care? Right, because you can make you can make music that that is arguably great, but if you put it in front of the wrong people, no one will care. And you can you can put music in front of music lovers, but if the music isn't great, no one will will, will care either. So it's those two things together, and in the the that's the science of it. The art of it is testing it. Like how, how do you do that? And I think that technology, as well as playing in front of people, does allow for that. Does allow for you to test those things because only when you do that, only when you do something that's truly remarkable that people will talk about. And, and only when you put it in front of people predisposed to care, do you have that magical thing that happens where you shift the burden of promotion from the band. It's no longer the band saying, hey, everybody, listen to our new song, to their fans, to their fans telling their friends. And, and I've seen it, you know, not, not a ton of times in my, in my career. But when you do see it, it's magic. When you see it, when, when some artist makes something that the listener cannot help but tell someone else about off off things go and and it, it and, and, and that will always happen that that happens irrespective of, of how we sell music how we consume it etc because that that then takes music to that place where it becomes a reflection of our internal values and 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 that that's why we get up in the morning and so focusing on those two things in in, in creating a set of tests to try that and try it in different ways and try it fast and try it low cost. Um, that, that's the best advice I can give artists. 